Hey guys and girls, this is Shardy for another little episode of Shardy's Reef Tank. Uh, very excited. Um, it's Wednesday today and tomorrow, Thursday, I'm getting my new Radeon LEDs, three of them. I'm going to spend the evening racking them up on the, on the wall, so i tell you what, I'm just so excited. And the very day after that, on the Friday, two days from now, my tank arrives. So... I just thought I'd do a little quick update and just show you some of the planning that I've done um, for this whole system, um, which is taking me basically about six weeks, I'd say, in thinking about everything I'm putting into it. So I just thought I'd show you a few diagrams here of what I've done and you know the way in which I've I've thought about this. And I think it's really important to do this, especially if you're not that uh, like me. I've never done a tank before, so. Um, I needed these diagrams to just visualise in my head exactly what was going on with the system um, and how it's all going to work. Uh, we, obviously with having no experience with tanks this is really helpful to me and uh, I'm sure it's a good thing to do for anyone who's customising and building their own reef tank. Let's have a look at this first diagram. I really, I just did this diagram basically to, uh, to help me with the automatic salt water change that I'm trying to programme. As you can see, there's three little float switches here at the bottom, and uh, there's it's a bit of complexity to this. Um, I'm not going to go into it quite now, and you'll probably see in some later videos, but I really had to think about how many float switches I was going to need to automate the, uh, the salt water changes in the tank. And I want it to be completely automatic, and I also want to do large salt water changes, as opposed to little 5% ones every day, which some of the research I've uh, read about tells me that it's not it's really not as efficient as doing larger water changes so so just looking at that that obviously these two tanks you've probably seen in a further previous video uh, are over in my water storage area and at the end of this video I'll show you a little uh, few modifications I've made in there but moving on uh, this is obviously probably looks pretty complex but and there has been some changes to this because I'm not going now with the Aquatronica plug modules. I've now gone with a Profilux system. Um, so the design of this is slightly different. But again, there's a lot of electronics in this, this whole design that I'm doing. You know, you've got obviously heaters, float switches, skimmers, probes, you know, the, the plug units themselves. There's the, the main controller. I've got my Vortec wave drivers. So there's, uh, you know, there's a lot going on basically. So I needed to do a plan like this just so that I knew the spacing inside the underneath of the cabinet and how that was all gonna, everything was gonna fit in there correctly because obviously this is a custom designed cabinet, um, and also this just gives me a good idea of how I'm gonna wire it. Um, so you know, I'm just feel like I'm in a more confident position before I uh, I do this. This one's just a basic uh, setup of. Uh, the, pl the plumbing in the uh, under the cabinet uh, where the sump is pretty simple really I mean most of you've got uh, who are pretty savvy with reef tanks it's just pretty basic but again for me it just gives me a, as I'm plumbing the system myself I just want something that's going to help me uh, this one is my water storage plan which you've probably seen I've already built this um, in some of my earlier videos and this really helped me uh, you know plumb all those uh, pipes together and get everything right, all the valves where I wanted and the RO unit and everything. So this was invaluable to me when I was building that setup and there was only one slight change with uh, one of the pumps here um, compared to how this diagram lays out. Uh, so I'm really happy with that and it's helped me a lot. This one is just a little il internal cabinet uh, layout to scale. Uh, I wanted to make sure when I was designing the cabinet that the size of the things that I'm I um, could put in there are all going to fit and I'm going to have enough room to remove the skimmer head and you know generally work uh, this this box here you'll see is it's a big 8x8 box that I've had put into the it has been moved actually slightly over to the right but it's to allow you know if I want to remove any of the electronics I can fit the plugs through there and everything comes through and racks onto this panel here quite quite neatly at the front and um, so uh, that just just let me know, give me the confidence to know that everything is going to fit in. I have put a calcium reactor here, but I'm probably not going to use a calcium reactor. But you know, I'm just future proofing and making sure that everything is, uh, you know, good for the future. 
This again has changed. I, I did this quite a while ago. It was just trying to again trying to visualize this automatic salt water system, which has been probably the most complex part of the of the thought for me, of the thought process getting this right. Um, I'm still not 100% convinced that the Profilux will. I can run the programs they want to run in order to make this work, but you know I guess that's one of the fun unknowns about this, um, and I'm going to find out. Uh, in uh, well, probably within a week or so, that I'm able to do that. So, um, so that was that. These these are the cabinet drawings themselves. Obviously, just specifying. I've got a plug point in the wall, specifying where that is. Holes in the back to allow for wires to come in. Um, the general sizes and specs there. Um, obviously, this is a this is a support bracket that allows me to hang all the wires without them dropping down and everything in the uh, in the top of the tank that's uh, and uh, that's an overview of the actual tank and the weirs the overflow boxes which to be honest is one of the only things that i think i've just made a little bit of a mistake on too late now because it's almost it's almost ready but i've made these weirs eight by eight uh, inches which to be honest i think is a little too big but yeah, i'm not i'm not too concerned still happy with it um that's the size and dimensions of the actual tank and the cabinet um with a little trim and everything uh, that's just the refugium from the side that's my custom sump that I've designed um, all the all the measurements for that so they could build it for me um, this is one of the left side panels in the cabinet allowing for a little hole for pipes to come in through the side so I can feed the uh, the RO top up in any other pipes like the uh, salt water changes and stuff like that and yeah that was the actual redesign of the access hole it's it's moved over to the right a little bit um it just had to be like that because of the the supports running down in the doors so not a big disaster but um it was a little change i made you can see from the side there this little baseboard and top unit this is what's going to be mounting a lot of my panels and computer equipment and the wave drivers and certain things and you can see this is um, that's actually a square that allows all the all the cables to run uh, neatly over the top there. So um, and that's back to the beginning. And uh, I'll just show you very quickly. There's um, we've got this is what I've used basically um, an Excel spreadsheet to when I was planning this system. I was looking at various equipment that I was going to use. I put links to the websites pretty handy thing to do if you are doing this because you can then use the links go back compare prices try and get the best prices for everything um, obviously things have changed on this plan um, but that's all part of it and and obviously I can see how much I was under or over budget I've currently spent six grand and I'm a hundred and three pounds uh, under budget which isn't bad um, but I've still got another three and a half thousand pounds to spend which I'm going to be spending this week actually um, so yeah that plan shows all of that That's, this has just showed me when, obviously when I'm planning for this from a live rock of sand I need to know the volumes of the sump and the tank so it's a little excel spreadsheet I've just worked out you know in litres and gallons and converting litres to gallons and all that it's a bit of a pain because some people have it in litres and, and gallons and converting that to kilos um, and pounds is a big pain in the arse frankly but so I've just done a spreadsheet so that I know what the measurements are in, in every single uh, uh, equation. And this is my final, this is what I actually have bought so far. Um, and this is, well, it's actually missing a few things, but this is the final list of uh, things in my tank. As you can see, the t final total cost is £9,419. Quite a big investment. So you can obviously tell why I'm pretty... Uh, excited about this um, so yeah uh, obviously uh, you can pause the video at any point there just to look at the, the equipment what I'm using and what it's cost me so I might edit the video here now and just uh, show you a couple of the modifications I've made on the water storage plant 